and then um, so now let's go back to these guys so the one that answers your question Jose about the materials is this guy the little checkerboard with like the gear in front of it I think that's a gear it's kind of small to see um, so once you open this guy it will let you adjust how Enscape treats the materials that you're seeing in the model so you can have a material applied right now I'm using SketchUp so it has SketchUp materials Enscape will take a guess at how it should render that material but let's say you got it wrong we can tell it you know what it needs to do some of these things differently so let's grab that concrete and you can tell it like it will see all these materials so see these are actually from podium so it's grabbing some of the like basically all it will grab is like the texture map and then based off what it says it will do like different types of materials so let's say um, let's try and grab that wood the wood so albedo is is what color it's casting off so whatever surface has this on it it's gonna kind of use that as it's oh I'm in the tree so I'm trying to orbit around here so that we can look up at this so I'm going to change the time of day no, not like that. something like this so right now I have this kind of wood texture here but it's it's reading really smooth so if I wanted this to read differently what we can do, I'm going to try and get a little bit closer so that it's not so obvious there. So it does look pretty good and the only thing it really has right now if you look is the albedo is that that image that came from the material so see here it says texture whatever JPEG has no tint color image fade is at 100 so it's pretty much there is nothing on there and then we don't have any sort of map set to any of these it's just telling it just keep that whatever that image needed to be and then just render it like that so if we wanted this to have a little bit of like texture so it looked more rough since it's wood you would go down here to where you have the bump transparency and self illumination wood doesn't really have right because it's not going to glow it's not a light and then it doesn't have transparency because it's not clear so I'm going to skip those and go here so the first thing you want to do see how you can't add any amount of, of bump so bump textures are what you use to give it that kind of roughness and you can use like let's say you wanted it to look like a checkerboard so some of them are smooth some of them are not you could find an image of a checkerboard that was black and white and wherever you show it white it will make it bump bumpy and where it's black it'll go not bumpy so if you don't have anything like that that's where you would do that if you had like a, a different texture but you can tell it to use the albedo which is a really good way to do it because you always want to use the same image to create the texture maps unless you want a totally different effect but that's the way you'll actually get it to line up because you can't find a different wood that's going to have the exact same grain as this wood so if you use albedo notice how it's created this new image there and then the amount you can adjust it so see here how this is getting more gritty and as we move around you'll see that it's no longer oops like that perfectly smooth texture that we had before and then you can dial it way down a material type so right now it's default you can have grass, water, foliage, and then clear coat. So clear coat will give it like a little shine to it. Um, you can also do that here using reflections. So we could start giving it like more or less. So the less r roughness you give it, the smoother it becomes and the more you actually see. And then the specular, as we adjust this, you get more or less reflections. You want to watch out, not make everything like 100% shiny. See there, it's getting like a lot of stuff. This stuff starts looking weird if you do a lot. 
Um, what's this marble have on it? Does that have any reflection? Oops. So, if you ever forget kind of like what it's doing, you highlight your mouse on top of a little question mark and it gives you tips and says like, oh, that's what this does. Or metallic is like, it's basically going to adjust the, um, the angle at, at which you need to be at for this to look reflective or not reflective. So see, the more you give it, now like any angle that you look at this, it will be reflective. Whereas if you have a really low Fresnel angle, you need to be more along the edge for it to be reflective. See, there I can kind of see a reflection, but here you won't. So you can play around with those until you get all your materials to look the way you like. It's really like what you need to be adjusting. You can give it a tint. Um, there's a ton of stuff you can do, um, but majority of this is all going to be set like that. Um, so that's the basics of the material, and you can select the material in SketchUp, and it will highlight here, or you can just pick it here if you know what it's called. Um, so those are the big ones to kind of keep in mind. If we if I show you the grass real quick, it's set to grass type, and that's really all you have to do. You have that one you set to grass type, and then there are like settings like grass height, grass variation, variation of the height, and then you can play with those. So see if we make it taller, you see your grass is like getting out of control. So you can play around with that. I have two different grass materials, a lighter one and this one. So that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, let me pull it down a little. And the variation is how natural or clean cut you want it to look. So that's materials. The other one.